When building user interfaces, separate the logic that handles data from the code that displays that information on the screen. This makes your code easier to manage, less error prone, and more flexible for future updates. The model view presenter pattern neatly organizes your code into three main roles. The model, which holds your data, the view, which displays that data, and the presenter, which acts as an intermediary between the two. Take, for example, an in-game radar. The model is responsible for handling the data logic. This radar model class encapsulates the data on enemies detected in the world. The model also contains methods that manipulate this data, such as cast radar beam, which sweeps around to detect enemies. The class captures the essence of the model. The radar model is where enemy data is stored and updated. The model doesn't know anything about the radar screen, which is the view. The view is the user interface. It displays data to the user and sends user interactions to the presenter. It's used for rendering the UI elements and animations. The radar view class is handling the visual representation of the data, specifically how the red enemy blips are displayed. So here we have a method for update blip position. The presenter does all the thinking for the view. So however it is that enemies are detected in the world and the position is found on the screen for all the scary little red blips, the view doesn't know about that. It's given a blip and the position the blip should be at. The blip is also activated, which isn't essential at this point, but it is the kind of display-related functionality the view would handle, such as when a new enemy is detected. The view features a sweep to indicate where the radar beam is in the world, with a rotation angle sourced from the presenter. Finally, the view provides a blip animation on detection. There are some assets being used here, between and shapes. The blip UI element utilizes shapes' disk component, making it the view's responsibility to get that from the blip game object. On detection, the blip gets bigger and then gradually shrinks. This example then underscores that the view is dumb, since it neither houses business logic nor maintains state, as in it doesn't remember or track changes. The presenter is responsible for coordinating the model and the view. The radar presenter in this case creates a dictionary that maps detected enemies to corresponding radar screen blip game objects. This demonstrates how the presenter is intended to get data from the model in order to use the data to update the view. The presenter serves as an in-between. In our example, the radar sweep rotation is sent both to the view for the UI screen arm and the radar beam, the rotating raycast, which ensures that both rotations are in sync. If the model's data changes, the presenter handles any logic or formatting that the view requires. For instance, when an enemy is detected in the model, the presenter updates the red blip's position on the radar screen accordingly. Once the blip's position is adjusted, the presenter instructs the view to animate the blip, offering a visual cue to signify the enemy's new location. Before we move on and take a look at the ebook example, let's quickly review each part of the pattern and explore a couple hypotheticals. The presenter, represented by this circuit, is essentially the intermediary. The presenter gets data from the model and formats it for display in the view. The user or player can interact with the view, Unity's UI, button, toggle, and slider components. These inputs are sent to the presenter, which manipulates the model. The view is dumb as possible, in that it only knows how to render itself based on the data given to it by the presenter. And the model remains a pure data store without dependencies on the UI. Within each part of the MVP pattern, it's common to have multiple scripts that collaborate. For example, a simple on-off button. This button, equipped with the Unity event, is considered part of the view. When the button is interacted with, it triggers a method in the presenter, which then handles the logic to control the radar's behavior. Depending on the design requirements, you have the flexibility to choose whether only the visual representation of the radar should change, keeping the model's raycasting and enemy tracking active, or if you want the model to cease raycasting as well. This flexibility is a key advantage of the MVP pattern, as it allows you to fine tune the behavior of your components independently. Let's try a new feature. Say we add a threat level indicator. The model keeps the distance and number of enemies detected. We could then design the threat notification UI for the view. For the threat level determination, does that go in the presenter or the model? If the threat level is primarily for visual representation and doesn't directly affect the core game mechanics, it's suitable to handle its logic in a script in the presenter. If the threat level has significance beyond just being a UI element, such as influencing AI behavior or game mechanics, it's a good practice to calculate and manage it within the model. The presenter can then subscribe to events or notifications from the model to update the view whenever the threat level changes. This ensures that the logic controlling the threat level is centralized in the model while the presenter handles its representation in the view. Now that we've established a feel for the pattern, let's see how it adapts to different contexts. 
The ebook has practical examples for each design pattern, and for MVP, we use QuizU, which is a UI toolkit example you can find free on the Asset Store. Let's take a quick look at how MVP plays out in the audio settings screen. The model in this case is the sound settings data, which is stored as a scriptable object for easy cross scene accessibility. Scriptable objects also naturally adhere to the principle that the model should be independent of the view and the presenter. The view in this example uses Unity's UI Toolkit. If you're not familiar with the UI Toolkit, it's inspired by standard web technologies and offers a more flexible and efficient way to design UI. Not only is the QuizU project an example template, there are also interactive demonstrations of the various UI Toolkit features. Just like the standard buttons in UI components, the view of MVP is baked into the Toolkit. Acting as the view, the Settings screen class references all interactive elements within a parent container and registers callbacks for sliders and button clicks. When a user changes the slider, the slider element is updated and the presenter is notified through an event when the UI is changed. The view doesn't reference the presenter, everything is communicated through events. Settings presenter sits between the view and the model. It handles the changes from the view, updates the model, and vice versa, just like we saw with the radar. Settings Presenter doesn't use any UI elements, only the view references these, like how only the radar screen worked with the Shapes Vector Graphics Library. It's worth noting that MVP is just one of several patterns that aim to separate concerns in software design. There are variations like Model View Controller and others that you might find more suitable for your specific needs. Not every project may require the formal structure of MVP or its variations, like sometimes the simpler separation of data and display logic is sufficient to achieve a clean and maintainable code base. Patterns are your tools, they're not the boss of you. The ultimate goal is to create systems that are efficient, maintainable, and achieve their intended purpose.